Ay, 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 am I excited about today's video? Um, this is something I've been waiting to do for a long time now. I just wanted to make sure everything was right in place and perfected before I made this video. But today we are talking about how I edit my photos. I know I get dozens of DMs asking what types of filters I use, what types of software, and how I get the best colors for my images, especially for Instagram and for my personal photography and any types of professional gigs that I'm going on. Now, I will say all of these photos will be edited using my very first pack of presets. They are going to be available. I will have them linked in my description down below. Right now, they're going to be on sale for the next 48 hours. So make sure to hop on that before they go back onto their regular price. I would love for you guys to use these because honestly, they are kind of like one touch presets, meaning that as soon as you apply them, they're instantly going to make your photos look better with just a little bit of tweaking. You're going to really be able to take your photography game to the next level. I personally spent hours developing these presets, trying to get it to match my own aesthetic and obviously bringing inspiration from other photographers. But I hope you guys enjoy. And as always, let's just roll that intro. So first off, we're going to be starting off with a few of my favorite photos that I've selected just because I think they're good sample images to work with because they have a lot of color, a lot of vibrancy, and really help you guys understand the workflow and how I edit my photos. So um, some of these are maybe already edited. I'm just going to reset all of them. Okay. So number one, I've named all my presets obviously after Drake songs just because I had no other naming category. Um, there are a few color presets and there are I think two black and white presets, you know, depending on the type of mood you're going for. So let's just go through them real quick. Feel No Ways is just a really good black and white filter. It looks really great just on any type of photos. Fire and Desire is pretty good. It gives it a little bit more of like a pinkish hue. Um, Headlines is also another good one. It's really great for like bright lit scenarios. So this one in the city is a good example. Hotline Bling uses a little bit different color tones. There's some blue hues and some purple hues in that. Um, Marvin's Room is a little bit more of a darker, more dramatic, moody vibe. I mean, it's Marvin's Room, you have to. Mob Ties, it's similar to Feel No Ways, but it's a little bit more of a saturated and more contrasty, punchy black and white. Um, nice for what, to be honest, this is probably the one I use for most of them just because it looks the best. And then the last one I think is Views. Views also looks incredible for landscape and architecture photography. Um, to be honest, like this looks really good right now. Like I said, guys, I literally applied this preset. There's really not much else for me to do because I think it looks pretty good right now. Um, maybe I'll up the shadows just a little bit and that's really it, guys. All right, so when it comes to editing photos, obviously what's most important is how it looks to you and whether or not you like it. Like, don't let anyone else really tell you how you guys should be editing your own photos because it's 100% up to you. You know, the big thing about presets is that they're really going to work best when you properly expose your photos when you shot them in camera, meaning that all the adjustments that I made in these presets are going to work if you've shot it with the right ISO, the right aperture, the right shutter speed, um, and then you can go in and adjust them accordingly depending on the type of preset that you're using. So to be honest, um, yeah, once again, let's go for nice for what. You know, the the highlights are a little bit blown out so i'll probably bring that down just a little bit and maybe bring down the exposure and i mean that's really about it if you look at the before and after there's a huge difference just seeing like how much color these presets are able to bring back um, but let me reset it let me see if i can get a somewhat similar color yeah so i guess this is once again using nice for what but let me try let me try with like mob ties so this is obviously a moody black and white photo um Man, guys, like these presets are kind of killer. Like I, I wish I could explain more about how to use them. But if you guys aren't interested in buying the presets, let me kind of go through and show you what I would do if I didn't have them and what I do um, normally if I'm not editing off of presets. Luckily, the exposure is properly lit. It looks great in camera. The only thing I'll probably do is bring down the highlights just a little bit because it's in that window glare and I don't really like that. Um, bring up the shadows a little bit, add a little bit more contrast. Clarity, maybe around like five. And now clarity just gives it a little bit more of a sharper image. Saturation, vibrance, dehaze, I kind of keep that all neutral. Now, when you come to the tone curve, the tone curve is a very useful tool for any photographer because it really allows you to manipulate the shadows and the highlights of your photos a little bit different than the basic exposure panel. So you probably heard of the S curve, which is basically what this looks like right here. Um, and if you bring down the top curve a little bit and then bring up the bottom curve, and then drop down the middle point. Um, it gives it a little bit of a faded look, which is where a lot of these like faded film looks come from, the Viesco presets, like all of them kind of use the S curve. So I'll show it before and after. So you can see already that's making a huge difference. And wow, that looks pretty good. Okay, moving on to 
HSL. HSL is your hue, saturation, and luminance tab. This is where you can really play with a lot of the colors and bring out different textures in your photos. So this one obviously has a lot of great greens and yellows. Um, let me play around with it a little bit. I think the green hue is good. I don't know if I want to go darker, but I might go lighter. Yeah, I'm going to go a little bit lighter. And then the yellow hue. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just bring it down a little bit like that. And then the saturation. See, because my skin tone is obviously yellow, if I play around with this yellow saturation, it's going to affect my own skin tones just a little bit. Um, so I won't move that one too much. The greens, let's make that pop a little bit more. But the cool thing about Lightroom is that you can actually pinpoint your exact color and scale it to the way you want. So if you click this dot right here and then point to, let's say these shoes, and let's say I wanna make them wait, like I can make them really like cherry red, pink red, saturated, but um, I'm not gonna do that. And so let's just bring it back down. So that's a really helpful tool if you are ever using Lightroom. Luminance, I'll keep that the same. Now, split toning, um, it took me a little bit of a while to kind of get into split toning just because I didn't really understand the process of it, but it's super simple. Now, a lot of people use split toning when it comes to their Instagram aesthetic because if you have a similar, you know, maybe pink aesthetic or a blue aesthetic going through all your photos, it just gives it a much cleaner look. Um, personally, I don't really mess with split toning just because all my photos are taken differently that I don't think I have one aesthetic that will match all of them. But if I do split tone, um, I will probably keep it in the lower range. And maybe for this one, I'll just do like in the yellow just a little bit. And then let's go to the shadows. And you know what? I'm not gonna add any shadows with Tony. Now moving on to lens corrections. If you have taken your photos with a wide angle lens and it looks a little bit distorted, Lightroom does a really great job of fixing that automatically for you and detecting exactly what lens it was shot on. So I've already enabled my profile corrections, but you can see what it looks like without it. It gives it that almost vignette distortion fisheye look. So I will do that just to bring out that vignette. Um, that looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna reset this. Now, once again, going through my presets. Oof, that one's good. Oof. Guys, to be honest, the hard thing about these presets is that they all look good that I don't know which one to pick. Um, let's go with headlines. Headlines gives it like this really nice soft look. Um, first off, I'm going to adjust the crop. I forgot to mention that on my last one, but if you don't adjust your crop before you do any of your edits, it's gonna be hard for you to figure out your composition um, as you get later on in the edit. So I always start with the crop and yeah, right there is good. Yeah, that's really about it. Okay, so I will say this, when using presets, there may be certain occasions where you have a photo and you think it's instantly going to be fixed by putting on a preset. And I will tell you that that is not the case because there are literally hundreds of variables that go into every single photo that no one's presets in the world will be able to make it perfect on the first try because like I said, there are so many variables that go into it. But what you can do is you can apply it and then do your basic adjustments on top of that. So number one, like I said, I'm going to figure out this composition. Now, another huge thing is if you guys aren't using keyboard shortcuts, um, I highly recommend figuring that out because that will just save you so much time. And especially when you're editing multiple photos in batch, keyboard shortcuts will literally save you so much time. Obviously this photo is looking a little bit dark, so all I have to do is bubble up the exposure, um, maybe like turn up the saturation a little bit. Boom, that looks perfect. Now I've developed these presets using both my Sony cameras and my Canon cameras. So don't worry about that. I can promise you that the skin tones and the colors are going to be accurate regardless of whatever camera you're using. So I made sure not to affect any of that, but it's really just going to help bring out the colors um, of your photos. Oh my God, I can't believe I forgot. Before you start shooting any photography, you guys have to be shooting in raw. If you aren't shooting in raw, none of these, okay, not that's a lie. They're, they're still gonna work, but you're just not gonna be able to get the most flexibility out of your images. And if you don't know what it means to shoot in RAW, RAW essentially just gives you the most information in your photos that you're going to be able to really manipulate the exposure, manipulate the highlights and the shadows. It gives you a lot more to work with than you're working with JPEG. JPEG is like working with a fucking, um, I, I don't even know an analogy. Just shoot in RAW, please. So these next photos were taken with Canon cameras and I will show you how it looks with that. This might be kind of a shitty video because I'm just kind of using my own presets. <laughs> okay, so it's kind of a little desaturated, so I'm gonna bring that up just a little bit to make that yellow pop. Now, a really cool tip that you can do is use the brush tool, um, and I didn't learn this until like two years into my photography, but if you just use the brush tool and like brush over someone, then you're able to like adjust the exposure of just one part of an image without doing that whole thing. So if you look at it before and after without the brush, like see how there's just so much more clarity to her face. Um, 
And then if you want to get even more detailed, you can come in with the brush again, decrease your brush size, and then just like put it over her eyes. And you know, be very careful when you do this because you don't want to overdo it and make it look like kind of awkward or unnatural. But like if you bring up the exposure, maybe bring up the shadows a little bit, add a little bit more saturation, you can just really make your model's eyes pop. Boom, that looks perfect, wow. Now this is a, such a fire photo, I absolutely love this one. Um, I'm going to be doing a kind of what, like a moody vibe. So let me go with views because it brings out that blue saturation in Vale's jeans. Uh, maybe I'll adjust the composition a little bit to go for that left third. Up the exposure and wow, that looks stunning. Super happy with that photo. And guys, this is honestly like one of my all time favorite photos just because look at these flower petals. But let's do, um, for this, I kind of want a little bit more of a cool look. So maybe I'll play around with the temperature slider. But what I can do is if I want to bring a little bit more blue, I can go once again to that saturation panel, bring that up, maybe change the hue of the blue. It's kind of hard to see. Perfect. So since I wanted a little bit more blue, but the hue and the saturation aren't working, what I'm going to do is go to the split toning and then let's go add like a little bit of, yeah. That looks pretty good. And then if you know anything about color science, you kind of want to do like complementary colors. To be honest, I don't know the most about this, but I think blue and like a pink contrast would look kind of good. Um, so if in the shadows, if I play around the pink, I mean like that looks kind of cool. It gives it, you know, just a little bit more of a different vibe if you're looking to experiment a little bit. But overall guys, I think that about wraps up how I edit these photos. I know it may have not been much help because I was using my presets, but I did show you guys how to do it without using them. So anyways, like I said guys, my presets are finally available. I know a bunch of you guys have been asking for them. Personally, they just really help me speed up my workflow because I'm able to apply one of them to an image and then synchronize all the settings to multiple photos. And it just saves me a lot of time, especially when I have hundreds of photos to edit um, and the lighting conditions are all similar. Once again, they are going to be on sale for the next 48 hours so make sure to go check them out in my description down below now if you've stuck around to the end of the video congratulations because i have a very special announcement if you guys purchase one of these preset packs you are going to be entered in a giveaway to win one of my exclusive princeton champion hoodies i know i get dozens of dms asking where i get them from and they aren't for sale to the public but if you guys purchase the presets you guys will be entered to win one of them obviously if you guys aren't a photographer but still want to enter the giveaway it would just be a huge tremendous support for myself and i would appreciate that as well but that's about it i hope this was helpful for you guys to start editing your own photos and really just take your photography to the next level subscribe for more videos comment down below if you guys want to see anything else and as always don't stress finesse